Welcome back to the Love in Dubai show. We are joined by Frankie, who has just appeared on the UK show Married at First Sight, the bold social experiment where single people are matched by experts, they marry total strangers, and they meet for the very first time on their wedding day. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. We are so excited to get into the nuts and bolts of Married at First Sight UK. I was glued, I was gripped. Yeah. Um, guys, Frankie is a Dubai resident, or was. Uh, yeah. 16 years, Yes. you left to go and take part in the show where you'd marry a total stranger, thought process. Yeah, so basically I, um, I had a divorce a couple of years ago and I uh, tried for a couple of years to date and it was really not going well oh, and I kind of yeah. gave up on it. So I was in a place of like just being lost with it all and when I got a phone call to come on this show, as much as I understood that it can be very vulnerable, um, I thought, Like all my life, whenever a challenge, and an adventurous challenge is put in front of me, I just have to take it. I'm just like that. So yeah, so I went for it. And tell us about like the, the nuts and bolts of the show for me are crazy. Did mm. you really just see Marlies, who you were partnered with and who you eventually married? Did you really just see her for the first time at the altar? Not only did I just see her for the very first time, you know absolutely nothing about the person you're going to marry. Not their name, age, background, anything they are completely and utterly and everything that surrounds them a total stranger so that the shock impact when you first turn around is is it's just crazy it really is well because there was that moment at the wedding like just after the official marriage and you're chatting to each other and you know you mentioned you live in dubai and she mentioned she has two kids and it's like mm, that bang that, yeah that moment and you're just learning these things yeah it was it was a shock Um, everything in that first couple of seconds, you're absorbing it all and you're trying to then figure out. I'm a guy who thinks literally seven steps ahead, not two steps ahead. So I'm already trying to plan it. It's just my military background. This is what we do. I have to plan ahead mm -hmm. because why step into something that's not going to work? So, but I knew that there's a high chance of the person I was going to marry have children because they're going to be relatively my age. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And so... The surprise actually was that Marilise was born in the same hospital as me. Yeah, that's cool. So we're figuring this out as we're going along, trying to look good for the cameras. You're dressed up and you're thinking, is there chemistry with this person? Asking all uh, of the questions. Yeah. You, you, you bombard your own self with a million questions. You used to stay calm. Again, looking good for the camera. <laughs> da, da, da. Uh -huh. And all the time they're giving you these tricky, weird questions as well. And you have to off the bat answer them. Otherwise you look a bit lost. Okay. So your mind is on complete and utter overload. Wow. Yeah. And that's just the wedding because then the show goes on for a number of weeks. You go on a honeymoon together. Mm. You move into an apartment together. You see yes. each other's homes. And Frankie and Marley stay together the whole, th the whole way through. How intense is the filming? Are there cameramen there 24-7 or do they kind of pop in and pop out? Uh, they do pop in and pop out. But still, you have days where you're not up for it. Okay. Um, so after our wedding day, we went to the Lake District and we stayed in an amazing hotel and we did adventure stuff every day. And we both liked that. We were cool with that. But what that does is it deludes you into false sense of security that everything's really fine. Mm. So the wedding day is amazing. The honeymoon is amazing. And then you're locked in a small studio apartment facing a graveyard and you're not allowed out for days. They take your phone off you and all of a sudden you've gone from this, hey, life's so good to, whoa. What is this? Well, that's yeah. what, it looks like you just bang yeah. into reality and they're yeah. trying to test you in a way. Yeah, so you're locked in that small room for a couple of days with no phone and you're with a stranger. And me, Marilise and I got along very well, but still it's a lot for you to, you know, take in. And the only time you're allowed out is to either go to those dinner parties or the commitment ceremonies. That's Now, something I questioned, well. Wow. Yeah, the dinner parties are difficult because they're all day long. The women are full face makeup at 7 a.m. You drive for two hours and you're locked in this barn that looks all pretty on, on the inside. And you're given questions, right? Mm -hmm. And all the young ones like these questions. And again, I'm a guy who can only give, give honest answers. Questions like, for example, if you were not with your wife, which wife would you like to be with? And you're like, right. So there's three things that's happening now. First of all, your wife's looking at you like that. Mm -hmm. um, all the other wives are thinking, well, maybe yes, maybe no. And then all the other husbands are thinking, oh, yeah, really? So... Is that something everyone has to answer, though? Yeah. And that's just one of the questions. So the questions like that go around the table all the time. 
Some people are getting really drunk, some people are having arguments, and all the time, the camera's looking at you trying to get that one little bit where it's not cool. How much do you think they try to put pressure on the relationships for dramatic effect? Yeah, sure, that, that's exactly what it is, you know? It's all about putting pressure on you. Not only do they put pressure on you, they're the stories that they try and twist about other couples talking about you and what's your opinion of that couple. And I, was, I wasn't interested in these dinner parties at all. Um, and then the commitment ceremonies are really tough. Mm. And The commitment ceremonies are where mm. you sit with all of the other couples and also therapists um, yeah. who seem to be quite fair. But however, maybe the portrayal of your responses wasn't. Yeah. So you sit on this sofa, the pressure's on you, the lights are on you. As I said, it's an all-day thing. You've listened to the highs and lows of about eight couples before you. And you're kind of drained. But with me, they went straight in with some really tough questions. They didn't even ask how nice was the honeymoon or anything. And they tried to, uh, Mel Schilling, the Aussie girl, she tried to like, say that I was a controlling person. Mm-hmm. Now let me tell you something. Marilise is a woman who's completely in control of her life. She's very successful. She's very sweet as well. So for them to start innuendoing questions that I'm controlling her, I was on a back foot thinking, what are these guys talking about? And when you're on the back foot, for a guy like myself, you, of course you're going to get a little bit defensive, but I'm also in my head thinking, why are you asking these dumb questions? I'm not mm. controlling. If anything, she was more in control than I was living together. Well, this is the thing, because I would say that throughout the series, at certain points, you were painted as a villain. Yes. So to have had quite a good relationship, it looked like, with Marlies, mm. how did it feel to watch that back and to see that that's the way you were being painted? Yeah, this, this was something I've never experienced in my life. I've done some tough operations in the military, but to assume of all the seven weeks of strong, funny, romantic things you did with your wife, the fact to sit there and then watch nothing but like your very, very worst bits. Really? It's hard to swallow because I never knew that was going to happen. I didn't know that I was going to be the pantomime villain. And so I'm sat there with Marilise and her kids and we're all looking at each other thinking, What is this? And to watch that night after night after night, I, I called the producers, I said, what the hell is going on? They said to me, don't worry, it's only for 18 episodes, the last three you look really good. And you have to swallow that. And that's a lot of pressure on you because at the same time, I also didn't have a job. We were told not to be seen in public. They're still kind of controlling you for three months after mm. while they're editing you to be a villain. So that's, it's quite tough to, to swallow that. Now, you obviously weren't the only one. So let's say, for mm. example, Megan or Morag, they were also tarred with that same brush at different points. Uh, was that fair? Like you, you saw the other couples interacting, you saw the people as individuals. Were they portrayed accurately? They were, yes. Such a however, good show, by the way. Like, even however, more- I was not actually a villain. <laughs> Morag, um, Megan did have an affair. She did get too much flack for that, and then she dug herself out of it, and I thought very professionally, and then we drew a line underneath it and moved on. But she did actually do a really bad crime. Um, Morag, pff, the stuff she said about Luke was awful, the whole show. All right? Love Luke. Yeah, way. and Luke, Luke's now, thankfully, actually doing better than anyone on social media because they know he's a lovely guy. And he is. He is an incredible dude, let me tell you that. And he is a man as well. People kind of portrayed him that he's this, you know, softer guy, but he's... He's a great guy, let me tell you. So, but with me, I thought, I haven't really done anything wrong. And let me give you an example. My wedding speech was 30 minutes long. All I got was laugh and clap. Laugh and clap, oh, you know, like this. They showed a very tiny snippet. They, they, they showed two bits. Now, one of them was a joke about Marilise making my eggs every morning. But actually, I'd spent a lot of time saying she looks beautiful and amazing. Compliments to both families. And I thought, this is coming across a bit too mushy, so I'm going to do now a little dad joke just to break the ice, because it was all too mushy, and, you know? So I put that little joke in, but they started with that. Mm. They started with these twisted jokes, and they played their facial expressions from something else. But you know what? It's a show at the end of the day. I guess but... that's how the editing happens. But let's yeah. say, for example, in the actual show, editing mm. aside, what kind of moment stands out to you as, that was a tricky moment for me on the show? Um, my hardest part was getting around, I have to apologize for one comment, but it was edited really bad. So mid, mid, um, experiment, we're about four weeks in and 
I knew that some of the other cast were not really understanding me. Mm. And I was being private. I was being private about a lot of stuff because Marilise had children. And we, we said we're going to be a little bit closed. That was our team plan. And some of the other couples had a few things to say about that. Now, one of the dinner tables, I said, you know what, honey? Um, I'm going to address the table tonight. And I'm going to tell them, like, guys, look, you know, we're private. So don't have a go at me for that. It's just how we are, you know. And all week I was waiting to build this. So a lull came in. And I went, guys, um, and as I went like that, Marilise actually cut me up. And she knew I wanted to say this. I went, don't speak when I'm speaking like that, you know, because she knew I wanted to get it out. Mm. Again, the editing, the editing. So it looked, it came across really bad. And I did apologize. But yeah, so that is what it is. Um, It's interesting that you say you decided to be more reserved because you guys were looked at as like the more mature couple. Yeah. um, Not just in age, but just in also how you acted. Yeah. Um, And the final for me of the show was so positive between you guys. It was so beautiful. And you said kind of amazing things that you were going to move. And this was the main thing for Frankie Mm. Marlies, that you lived in Dubai. You made the decision, moved to the UK, moved to her town uh, to live near her kids. It was very touching. It was really nice. Um, What was the, was that a genuine decision at the time? So the reunion, sorry, the final vows and the reunion were both strong for us. By the way, I have to say something, first of all, for the reunion. My final vows, I wrote a poem that was outstanding and they cut it to a quarter of it. It was really, really good. And mm-hmm. they cut it down to a quarter. So that I was few moved. So when we've gone to the reunion. The Had re- you said, oh, would you have seen the final no, vows? No, no, I hadn't seen anything. Okay. But still, it was two months after we'd finished. So we go to reunion. And we were in a really good place then. And it was great for me to tell the experts of how much um, I was accepted by Marilisa's children and that I was 100% happy to leave my cool Dubai life for now a more mature life. And the reason why I came to that is this. I love what I've built here in Dubai. It's been hard work, but I'm 47 years old. And the cool things are cool, but I need to start doing more family and more mature oriented things And it was beautiful to go down that road in my mind with Marilise and her children, okay? Now, so people then watch that, but see how good we are. And that's the final episode, but in the real world, it was months on. Mm. And the sad, sad, sad news is that we broke up. We broke up for private reasons, uh, which I obviously will not say. <laughs> and um, So the, the, so the public had seen us do a U-turn, they believed, in two nights from not getting on to really getting on and then seeing the, um, in the news two days after reunion being aired that we had broken up. Mm-hmm. Um, we have remained friends. We speak most days. And um, she's a great person. What, what more can I say? But it just didn't work out. Um, if you're 25 years old and you have a few things going in your life, to make... The chemistry and the perfect thing of relationship is easier than when you're a super established 37 year old woman with two kids and a 47 year old guy who's also got his life. Mm-hmm. It's just harder for it to, to gel and bond. And unfortunately, for the long term, it hasn't turned out. Maybe we're still actually in the whirlwind of all this crazy experiment. And maybe in the future, like mm-hmm. I'm going to go back at the end of year, I'm sure I'll go see her and say hi. It maybe could rekindle itself. Yeah. But at the minute, we're still in seriously. Our minds are still trying to adjust, adapt, and come back down to earth. Our social medias have gone up. Now yeah. that takes a big effect as well. We're actually on a group with all the cast, and I said to them, look guys, take from this now what you can on social media, but don't think it's the real world or what the real world's going to be in a couple of months' time. 100%. Because news today is chip paper tomorrow. Um, well, it's amazing to hear that you and Marley still have that kind of, I guess, strong respect for each other because yeah. you shared the update a couple of days ago that it was ended, which was very mm. sad. But it's nice to hear that it could be an open, closed door situation. Let's um, see. But you are back in Dubai. You are busy. Your social media is, you know, hitting the roof. Yeah. And you're actually training Badu Jack, this yes. British professional boxer. So back in Dubai, straight back into it. You're not really yeah. fanfaring around with the uh, social media. You're going yeah. back into boxing. Yeah, yeah. So actually, I heard about this gig two months ago when I was still with my release, and I did tell her, if this job is confirmed, I will go regardless because it's an eight-week project that I can't turn down for two reasons. Number one, um, m- bigger than social media to me is what I am on this earth to do. And my job is a strength and conditioning coach for fighters, both boxers and MMA. And I love this job. It's an absolute honor. It's a dream job for me. 
Mm. Um, not only that, Badu is an incredible athlete and an incredible guy. So it not was, only do I love Julian the job, uh-huh. um, doing it for him means so, so much to me as well. Now, Badu's moving up to cruiserweight. He already has a super middleweight belt and a light heavyweight belt, and he's moving up to a third division. And the dream is in a couple of fights, he'll fight for a title and get the third belt. And you're ringside there helping him on. Yeah. But it's not just that, because also you are massively involved in the government games, which, yes. by the way, is coming back, guys, after a year hiatus thanks to COVID. Yeah. One of the coolest kind of unique mentally, physically, physical challenges yeah. that has governments from around the world and different entities, and your involvement is? Yeah, I'm trainer for the Dubai Municipality um, team. Oh my gosh, Now, so cool. let me tell you something. Two years ago, sorry, three years ago, um, we unfortunately came fourth and not a third or second because... Um, we got to the final with an amazing team. I love them. I'm proud of them. And my fittest girl, she broke her foot on a training session in between the preliminaries and the finals. Oh. And we were devastated. So we bring in a substitute to fill her gap. And on the, and then on the actual finals, we could only make fourth. Okay. We knew we should have been third or second. We couldn't ever be first because His Highness's team, Faza, Um, it was just an unbelievable team. But we, knew we, we knew we could have been second or third. So to come forth for us, we felt we, we fell so short through bad luck. Then the following year came, which was last year, and our team now, we were absolutely flying. COVID hits. Mm. And we're again. So the feeling for me and for the whole team is unfinished business. Like mm-hmm. I can't sleep thinking about and it. And it's majority uh, same team again. It's all, yeah, almost the same team again. It's the 9th to the 11th of December. If you haven't seen Gov Games in December, you have to come down and see it. It's the coolest event ever. Imagine taking an obstacle course race, but taking out the boring millions of miles in between, but making the um, obstacles actually like something from Gladiators and Disney and Ninja Warrior all rolled into one. You can't miss this event. It's literally unreal. I was down there one year at Kai Beach, and it's just like it's like an adult fitness person's playground, basically, yeah. but with insanely fit people. Yeah. Um, we're coming close to the end. We don't have a huge amount of time, but two questions from the audience. Oh. Uh, first one is, uh, Daniel Craig is down. Would you consider taking the <laughs> role? <laughs> Number one. <laughs> I get asked, asked this question all the time. Well, can, well, should I do the next James Bond? Let me tell you something. I'm overqualified. <laughs> yeah, of course I'd love to, but I think either Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy or Idris Elba is probably a little bit above me. I think we have um, a picture of you in the suit coming up here on the wedding yeah. day, and that's what people are referring to. Uh, finally, are you happy to be back in Dubai? Damn right I am. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a tough decision, and I was putting myself through, start growing up now, stop... having the adventurous lifestyle, start being a dad and a family member, but it's so easy to come back here. I love this city. It's the best city in the world. That's why I spent 16 years here as a freelancing guy. Dubai's superpower is how it manages beautifully to make every culture in the world all welcome here. And the people who I've met from all around the world is what makes it really, really special. And every single month, there's a new cool thing happening. And I I love that. I 100% agree. And Very finally, before we go, a quick shout out to your mom. I thought she was absolutely adorable <laughs> on the show. Joyce the voice. Just and, 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 like some of the questions she asked Marley, yeah. she was like, will I, will I see kids? <laughs> it was very lovely. And also to the Dubai Whites, which is actually how I made the connection. Dubai Whites. Leads, leads, leads. Leads, 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 leads. <laughs> Guys, that is it. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it so Thank much. You. That is it Thank for you very the much. Dubai show. This is Frankie from Married at First Sight UK. He's back in Dubai. Goodbye from us. <laughs>